Get ready for one more sale. Inspiring you with ideas through powerful and engaging interviews with top performers of their field. Now, join us as we discuss techniques and strategies of the coolest and most successful people on the planet. Check out our sponsors, Direct Mortgage Loans. Listen, these guys are committed. They provide outstanding service. I know personally because I work with them. They are also licensed in 22 states, so make sure you check them out and see if they can do work with you. Listen, they not only will take amazing care of your clients, they're based on building lifelong relationships with our buyers, our sellers, as well as us as realtors. They're looking for partners and they're providing the best resources, training, and knowledge the industry has to offer. So if you're interested in partnering up with somebody that's really innovative, check them out. Their website is directmortgageloans.com or you can reach them at 888-604-2525. Hey, Masters. Welcome to One More Sale, Path to Mastery Podcast. Guys, episode number 31, and as you know, we bring you the best of the best, and no exception this week. If you guys are thinking about building, or or let's say you already have a massive real estate team and you want to expand, we have Kristen Cole with us, who is the Director of Expansion for Keller Williams Realty, and she's just going to talk to us, guys, about when we should be thinking about expanding. She's going to share some of the strategies with us that the top teams are using to expand, and you know, one thing she says is, the easiest way, guys, to 100 million is expansion. And you want to make sure, though, if you are thinking about expanding, make sure it's the right business decision. Uh, she shares some great steps with us, and including we got to make sure that our vision is just massive. I mean, we have to have a massive vision, making sure we're profitable, obviously, in our current location before we expand. And, guys, uh, the, the key, really, you got to make sure that your main location is really, really uh, intact. I mean, with a powerful hub, powerful lead generation system, and it is profitable. So she's going to talk to us about all those things and answer that question. That question we're all probably thinking is, you know, when should I expand? And I'll tell you, get yourself into ESO. I took the class a few weeks ago with Kristen, and it was phenomenal. And the one thing I can tell you about ESO is... It's going to make you a better business person regardless if you're, you're ready or, or willing to expand or not. It's going to help you become a better business person and understand the system. So guys, hey, I really enjoyed this interview with Kristen. I've listened to it multiple times like I always do. There's so many great nuggets. And if you're going to expand, guys, here's the first step. Listen to this and get yourself into ESL. And please share this interview with everybody. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, share it and have a brilliant rest of your day. All right, guys. Hey, it's David Hill here with one more sale, Path to Mastery, and I am with Kristen Cole this week. Listen, I just had the awesome opportunity to take the ESO expansion class with her a couple of weeks ago, and I'll tell you, it was mind blowing. It was amazing, and it's such an honor. Kristen, hey, thank you for uh, spending some time with us. And Kristen is actually the VP of Mega Agent Expansion, and she's out there teaching and. Really just uh, expanding, expanding the whole world with real estate. So how are you doing, Kristen? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me today, David. It's, it's my honor to be here. Yeah, definitely. We appreciate your time. So we'll just jump right into it. So, I mean, how did you get started, Kristen, in expansion? Sure. Well, it actually was kind of a natural, organic thing. I looked up one day and was having a conversation with Gary Keller, and I said, gosh, you know, I really want to grow to my business to $100 million. And he said, you're going to have a difficult, as he would say, my dear, you're going to have a difficult time yeah. doing that in such a small town where there's only 1,200 sides done per year. And so that's really what got me on the conversation of expansion. And this was, gosh, back in 2010, 2011. And so what Gary helped me see is that if I wanted to grow a bigger business, given that there was a finite source where I was in the small town I was living, that I was going to need to go to the next bigger town next door and start a track and really gaining business and market share in, in Anchorage. And so mm-hmm. I already naturally and organically had some of that business, but I just became very purposeful about it. And that was then indeed my first expansion was into Anchorage where it was a bigger market, a higher average sales price, and allowed me to just grow my business. Mm. From what I'm understanding, just so so we're clear, it kind of 
you you kind of saturate your market, right? You you hit a ceiling of okay, I've done I've done what I can do, and and then you expand. Is that correct? Or, or tell well, us about that, or am I missing sure. something? No, that's a great question, and I think that people ask me all the time. As a matter of fact, I got that question on the call this morning. When do I actually expand? Well, I think I think a couple of things. One. Do you have leads that are actually naturally and organically showing up in locations nearby where you need someone to work those leads or work those appointments? Number two, do you have a business where there are folks in your world who want to get bigger, want to grow bigger, um, have a, a bigger vision, and they look up one day and say, you know, in order for me to stay with you and your business, we need to get bigger. And then the third reason you would expand would also be that, you know, you have adequate profitability in your current location and you, you know, naturally and organically are being pulled in other locations and, and you want to build a bigger business. You have a bigger vision. Those would all be great reasons to expand. Mm. So when you talk about those, those reasons, so you said a, a bigger vision, right? Obviously, you, you need the leads in order to expand and or so I, I mean i've even heard gary talk about you know sometimes you may have somebody that you're you're doing a lot of referrals with in a certain market and then you can is that is that part of it you you expand oh, sure. into that market just because of the necessity well and, sure and then, i mean he, he gives an example of of uh, some folks who had a radio show and uh, they were doing a radio show every week for their current city but they had no idea it was actually being broadcast in the city next door and funny thing happened they started getting calls from that neighboring city. And all of a sudden they looked up one day and they had referred like 75 transactions over the course of a couple of years to that city next door. And they said, you know, I think we should just expand into that next location. So their leads, their appointments took them there. So I think, you know, having the leads and the appointments in the neighboring locations and also having the profit from your current location to actually invest in expansion you know, in a nearby city makes a lot of sense. Mm. And when you talk about, you know, you said adequate profitability. So what, I mean, what does that look like? Like, is there a, a number that we're looking at or tell tell us a little bit more about that? Like, what does that yeah. really look like? I think that's really individualistic. I don't think there's one number, but what I can say is you don't want to ever put your, your current business or your local business at risk. So do you have adequate profitability such that you could invest in a location nearby mm -hmm. without putting your current location in jeopardy. I mean, I think that, I mean, this is just my opinion. This isn't something Gary has said, but I think you want to have a, at least a hundred thousand dollars worth of profitability in a year from the business that you already have before you, before you actually start expanding. I mean, let's just think of it in terms of business sense. If I was Starbucks or if I was Walmart and I looked up and, and, you know, we saw a need in a neighboring location for our services or for our product. Would we expand if we weren't profitable in the store we were, you know, in the city where we were? I don't think so. No. So I think we've got to be profitable enough such that we can invest in another store, i.e. location, and without jeopardizing the one, you know, the business that we currently have. Mm. Yeah, and I've actually heard some people say, well, what, what if I expand and then I... I take business away from, from my, my, my current business. Is that, is that, I mean, does that make sense? So I, I'm sure that must happen, right? But, you know, how do we deal with stuff like that? Or is that, should that even be a concern? Well, I think it, it does happen every day with someone like Starbucks. When they open up a store just, you know, down the street a couple blocks away, naturally there probably will be some cannibalization of the business. But inevitably, David, the profitability of the two will exceed the profitability of the mm. one. So that could happen, but, you know, in real estate expanding into the next city over, or if you're in a large metropolitan city like, you know, Chicago, expanding across the city into another market center, you know, the chances of you cannibalizing is not as great as it could be, for instance, with Starbucks. There's maybe some of it, but at the end of the day, the profitability of the two locations should exceed the profitability of the one. Yeah, that, that only makes sense. And, you know, the reason I bring that up, too, is obviously sitting through the class, I, I think I shared with you that, you know, my wife and I met in Newport, Rhode Island. So when I first heard about expansion, I said, OK, we're going to go expand in Newport because that's where we vacation every year. That's where my wife and I met. But then after taking the class, I realized that probably doesn't make 
a lot of sense because what we probably want to do is expand outwards, right? Kind of like grow outwards. Like you, you give a really good example of like how Walmart did it, right? And that's the most logical right. way. So can you talk to us about that, that logic? Well, you made me laugh when you said that because, you know, I think about it and I think, would Nordstrom expand that way? Would they say, you know, we vacation in Rhode Island and that's where me and my wife met. And so I think we'll just put a Nordstrom in Rhode Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of exactly, <laughs> right? You know, businesses don't think that way. Oftentimes, though, and I just heard it this morning where someone said to me, you know, we're actually from this other area and we might go back there someday and we have family there, so we think we might want to expand. And I said, let's mm -hmm. talk about the business reasons that you would want to expand. So I think, you know, you always have to bring it back to business. Are you making a good business decision? And the class that we teach, Expansion Systems Orientation, that class is designed to help you be a better business person, to help you grow the current business that you have, whether you ever expand or not. And I think that's the beauty of a class is it's a business class. And the principles that are taught there are reflective of, you know, the very way that Gary grew Keller Williams. And it's his 13-point business snapshot, which works. It's interesting. Well, it, you know, expansion may be new to real estate. It's not new to the business world at all. And the process that we take everyone through is the exact same process that Gary went through expanding this company. And he expanded locally first. And I think most people forget the fact that Gary became number one in Austin, Texas, within 24 months of opening. And then he expanded right there within 167 miles in Austin for several years before he expanded outside of the state. And that's the way to do it profitably and most efficiently is really build the business that you've got. And when you have a business that, you know, has reached a certain level and you've got profitability and your leads are taking you into another location, that might be a good time to expand. Yeah, I, I can, I agree with that. Now, now let me ask you this because, you know, you mentioned in the beginning, um, the three things are a bigger vision, uh, leads and then, um, profitability. So, Let's talk about vision. When you say bigger vision, and I know in the, in the ESO class, like you mentioned, it, it, even if you're not going to expand, listeners, listen, this, this is a class that's going to help you be a better business person. But we spent a lot of time on culture. Tell us why that's so important, culture and, and that big vision that you talked about. Well, I think that it's very underestimated, and I think a lot of us underestimated the impact of culture and the importance of it, even just in a neighboring location. And what I can tell you is that there was an, a podcast I listened to, oh, it's been over a month now, but Seth Godin was the one that I was listening to, and he said 77% of all people hate their jobs. So when you think about a bigger vision and you think about people who want to grow, there are a lot of people out there that would love an opportunity in a bigger vision in a bigger world, but in order for them to be attracted to you, you have to have a big vision that they can see themselves working their own business or working their business inside of yours. And so do you have a big enough vision to attract those type of people, people that really want a bigger life, a bigger vision, a bigger world, and can they see themselves succeeding with and through you? So if, if you're not willing for your vision to get any bigger, because Gary will tell you today, he doesn't need Keller Williams to get bigger in order for him to meet his financial goals. That's already happened. He's willing. I think that's the key word. He's willing to let Keller Williams get as big as it needs to get in order for you and I, David, to get what we want. Mm. And I yeah. think it's the same way when you think about expansion. You know, are we willing to let our expansion businesses get as big as they need to get in order to attract the people that, that we need to grow our business? So that's yeah, what I mean by vision. Okay, I get that. And I mean, and that's exactly how Gary keeps these these mega producers over at Keller Williams because he creates such a big opportunity within his world. All right. So now I want to go back to culture. And when you talk about culture, I know from going through your class, it, it, it sounds like it's really, really important that if you're going to expand, you're going to expand into a place that has a similar culture. So can you talk to us about that? Sure. Uh, you know, culture, I think, is very, very underestimated. And you had alluded to that and asked about, you know, well, how do you even know if culture exists? And I think in a market center, you certainly know if culture exists and is strong and healthy in any market center where 
you find a strong, bold program, Ignite, MAPS coaching, you know, people who are involved in MAPS coaching, going to family reunion, going to mega camp, um, we, where you have a robust training calendar, those are all real key signs that you've got a robust, healthy market center. Because with all of that, you know, there's going to be profitability and the culture of our company is about profitability as well, David. So I mm. think here's what we do know. We know when it doesn't exist. Uh, we can feel it. People leave, and typically it's not because of the money. Typically it's because they don't feel like they fit in. They don't feel like they're going to accomplish their big why in that group. They don't feel a part of it. Um, and people want to feel a part of something, David. It's just as important as money. They want to feel like they're making a difference more than anything else. So the question is, are we creating businesses where people feel like they can make a difference, they can earn a living for their family, they can be part of something bigger than them? If that's yes, then culture exists. If it's a no, then we've got some things to work on. Mm, Yeah, that that makes all the sense in the world. Now let's talk a little bit about lead generation as well. I mean, I know with our team is is primarily a, a prospecting base. We do a lot of physicals and expireds. And as we move into a new market now this market there's really just not a lot of pros- uh, physicals and expires and it's just a uh, different there's a lot of you know uh, it's a smaller market you have those those agents that tend to get all the business so how do you go about like kind of break into a market like that or would you just avoid a market like that what are your thoughts on something like that well you know it depends but what i what you're really describing and the thing that we haven't talked about yet is how important the who is that you get into business with when you expand. Yes. And it's really critically, critically important because if the hub isn't performing perfectly or you still have some snafus or things to work on, expansion will and does work if you've got a strong, powerful person that you're in business with in that other location. And what do I mean by that? You know, are they somebody that wants to take territory? Are they someone who looks up and can go out and get started every day without you telling them what to do? Are they people of action? Are they people that are willing to follow a system that produces a predictable result? And when you look up today and you describe what you did about expireds and for sale by owners aren't as plentiful as they once were, what do you do? Well, you can still prospect at a high level. And prospecting just doesn't mean expireds and for sale by owners. It also can mean circle prospecting. It also can mean calling your sphere of influence, your past clients. It can mean calling for much more than just for sale by owners and expires. So I think we all have to look up and say, what's our message? What's our value? And how are we delivering it to the people who are most likely to buy or sell? You are listening to One More Sale. Let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about some of the misconceptions when, when it comes to expansion. What, what would you say are, are, are two of the biggest misconceptions you hear? People don't follow the model. They think they have a more creative way that works. They try to talk themselves into someone that they think is going to be a perfect hire, and they're not. So I think several of us that were expanding before we even had a model, and some of us even after the model, looked up and said, oh, well, this person, we know they're not exactly the right behavioral style, for, you know, that great who in that other location. But I think it's going to work, and we give all the reasons that we think that it will work. And here's the thing about it. Talent is talent. And talent, empire-building talent, wants to take territory and wants to get it done. And we're fooling ourselves if we think that we can get it done with folks who don't have that mindset. Basically, the mindset very similar to yours, David, or, or to mine. You know, these people that get up and want to get it done every day. And so Mm -hmm. some of the biggest mistakes are they've gotten into business with people who don't have that natural behavioral style to get up and take territory, to have the grit to stay at the office as as long as they need to stay to get the number of nurturers, for instance, that they need to get. I think some people fall into the, the trap of saying, well, I made all my connects or I made all my calls, but I don't know what's wrong. Well, the question is the market changes all the time. And sometimes we have to come to work early and stay late, given the market that we're given or the market of the moment. And do we have people that we're in business with that are willing to do that? And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for people mm-hmm. with grit. I'll give you a, an example. You know, you know, sometimes we had someone move from Wisconsin over into Scottsdale, and he'd taken bold seven times, David. And do you think I had to or anyone had to tell him what he needed to do every day? 
Uh, probably not if you take probably a bowl not. times. Yeah. Right. So he knows exactly what to do. He took a aged pipeline report connected with 30 people the first day, set six appointments, and took a listing. First day on the job. Wow. Yeah, so my point is, is that people who are talented and know what to do and have the skills to deliver on what they need to do are going to get it done. And so the biggest mistakes is I see expansion um, agents get into business with agents who don't have that natural behavior to want to get up and get it done. Yeah. You know, one of my biggest takeaways too, from taking your classes, my intention with expansion was to take my listing specialist and then set him up in a market about, you know, 15 miles from us. And I think you're taught, you're alluding this as well as I need to find somebody in that market and, and build the team around, around that person. Is that correct? Sure. That's, and that, the, that's the right that's way the to do it. Way. Oh, absolutely. You want to find people that are tied to that market, who are in that market, who understand those cultural norms, who, who can connect with people quickly. In the case of the gentleman I just alluded to, he lived in Scottsdale before. And so he was merely moving back here. He knew the area. He, he knew the market. And so I think it's really important that you are expanding with somebody that's from that local area who is committed to that area. Because otherwise, you're never going to have a big business. You might have a small one in that location, but it's never going to be a big business if you don't connect with somebody that's from that location. So let's talk about when you say take territory, what, what does that mean? What do you mean by that? Well, I think in any market, it doesn't matter what kind of a market it is, there's opportunities. And in the market, especially as it's shifting, the question is, where is there opportunity that everybody's ignoring? Being able to look up and identify that and then go after it and take territory, take market share. There's never a better time to take market share than when a market is shifting. Because that market share that you take during that shift, you'll never, ever give up. But if you're one of those people who are not proactive and give up market share, the chances of you ever getting it back are pretty slim. So this is more now than any other time a great opportunity to take territory, take market share by looking up and saying, where's an opportunity that everyone else is ignoring? And we all know, David, when there's change, there's uncertainty in people's minds. Sometimes they're paralyzed and they don't take action. It's really an opportunity for everyone to build their businesses to a much higher level by just being very, very focused on the simple execution of lead generation. Now, the who, it sounds like the who is is really important. I know you mentioned three things earlier, you know, bigger vision, leads, and and profitability. Is the who come in front of that? Or tell tell us about that. Is it the who first? Yeah, Gary would say the who never comes in front of it. You know, people ask him all the time, well, why didn't you expand to California first? And he said, because the right partner showed up in Oklahoma. When he got ready to expand outside of the state of Texas, he didn't look up and say, gosh, I want to go to Oklahoma. He looked up and saw that the most talented person that he should get in business with next was in Oklahoma. So he went to Oklahoma. So I think the key is expand locally first. And if an expansion person or an agent comes along that seems incredibly talented and they've proven that they've been an empire builder and taken territory before it in, in some sort of sales capacity, that may be somebody that you want to expand with next. But I can't express enough to the people on the call how important it is to take a year or two, ex- do your first expansion very local, where you can get in the car and drive across town or drive an hour away and sit down with folks if they're having trouble. It's just really, really important to expand locally first. And then, you know, it, most of us will expand, you know, maybe once or twice, David, add a lot of profitability to our bottom line and have a great life. You know, not everyone is going to want to go take on, on the world like Adam Hergenrother or some of the other agents mm. in our company who are expanding crazy. Sure. But you know, here's the thing. They didn't expand like that initially. They went slow to go fast. So go yeah. slow to go fast. Like Gary said, it may take you a year or two to find the right person to expand with you know, to find that right talented person. And so it's, it's really important, yes, that you have the foundational structure. So you've got your three key hires. You have profitability. You have a big vision. And equally important is that you've got talented people who then will take your business there. You won't have to go sprout it or sprout expansion. You know, do you have people who naturally want more and are willing to execute on a model that can take you? expansion instead of you saying, I'm going to go build it. 
It should mm. never be, I'm going to go build it. It should be, you know, you've got talented people on your team that want to go build it. You've got profitability. You have a big vision. You're willing to let them go build it. And you've got the systems and models that you're following. And then expansion with leads. You also need leads will naturally and organically happen. And that's initially first. And if you want to have a great expansion, you want to have great profitability, go local first and find the right talented person to partner up with. So, so let's talk about the hub because I know the hub is, is ultra important as well in the expansion. So talk to us about a, a, what a hub should look like. Well, do you have your three key hires? Do you have your admin systems, your lead gen systems, and your support, your leadership in place such that they can reproduce at the hub or centrally? You know, can they produce a predictable result for another location but from the centralized hub? So do you have systems that are predictable, that have a predictable result? If you do, then your hub is probably ready to expand, and we take you through an exercise in ESO, about a 45-minute exercise, to really examine those three pieces of the hub. Do you have a hub that's re- that has the capacity to take on that additional be- business and still have that great customer service? Mm. So if you don't, and you don't have those three key hires, or you don't have the leads, you probably are not a candidate for expansion. You need to go back and do those things first. And then our expansion will happen naturally and organically. But you've got to have your three key hires, and you've got to have systems and models to follow you know, that will produce a predictable result in another location, David. Yeah, so Kristen, it sounds like your, your hub needs to be rock solid before you even think about expanding. And, and, uh, and I know that. that that's something that we're working on right now. So what is, what's your biggest challenge right now, Kristen? So interesting that you ask that. Our biggest challenge now is, is we want to go deep versus wide. So we're looking for more people for the locations we're already in. We've already built the foundations. You know, we already have the systems in place. We've already been lead generating in all those locations. So now we look up and we have more leads than we do people. So it's a great problem to have, but for us, we're looking for more key people in the locations that we already have so that we can go deep versus wide, add to our profitability. Explain, explain deep versus wide. So rather than going into location after location after location, instead go deep, meaning add additional folks in the current locations that we are so that we can have a deeper, more robust business there where we've already spent the capital money, capital cost of building out the geographic farm and all the systems and models. Because now being in some of those areas for a couple of years, that now we're getting the lead generation and the leads coming in like you would in any business that you've built over a couple of years. So now you have a lot more come listings. And so in essence, we have more leads than we do people, David. So We need more talented people in all the locations that were already located. We should really look at that first versus going out and just opening another location. There's lots of people that want us to come, but to to make good business decisions will be more profitable right now because we have leads that are not being serviced at a high level at some of the locations because we have so many leads and not enough people. Yeah, it's interesting. No matter who I talk to at any level – Finding talented people is always their biggest challenge. Always. Um, so a <laughs> couple more questions. I know, I know you got to get going pretty soon, Kristen. Based on what you know today, here we are. I know there were some teams back in 2010, 2011 that were exploring expansion. What, what would you have done different or yourself? What, what, what would you have personally done different? Got out of my own way. And I say that because I think Gary says it so well, and we hear it, and then we ignore it, and then we do it, and we're like, wow, why didn't I do that before? And that is, he said, you know, most likely, if you're the person that has built the seventh level team where you are, most likely you're probably not the right person to go be the expansion director and grow expansion. Understanding that all of us only have so much capacity, and we only have so many people directly reporting to us, I think the two things that I would have done differently is I would have very quickly moved away from a centralized management system to a more decentralized management system because it's very hard to grow a big business under very a very centralized management system. Number two, I would have made the expansion director hire much quicker than I did. So for four or five years, well, for four years, you know, I had two locations. As soon as I made the expansion director hire in six months, now we're in 10. So 
when Gary said that you probably shouldn't be the one to go grow the expansion division, he, he's right. You only have so much capacity and you're kidding yourself if you think that you can do both. If you're going to go grow it, then somebody needs to take over the hub and somebody needs to you know, be the CEO over the hub. Now, Got can it. you expand once or twice and still keep that underneath your span of control? Yes. But once you go beyond two additional locations, you really have got to have someone that is driving it and growing it. If it's going to be you, then someone needs to take over for the job that you've been doing. To do both, you're not going to grow like you think you are. Awesome advice. So for the people that are listening, our listeners, our masters, what what would you uh, say is the first step if they're interested uh, interested in expansion? The first step would definitely be to come to one of our expansion system orientation classes. This year, I think we will have had 24 of them. We still have, I think, six or seven of them before the end of the year. But come and take one of those classes because you're going to learn exactly, you know, how would you expand and what would be the right first domino that you put in place such that you have a domino run. Many people come to expansion, David. They intend on expanding to a location before they come to the class. And after they come to the class, they realize that that would have been a, a bad business move. And yeah, so, that's me. That's me. Well, and, <laughs> and we had a fellow stand up in the class that you were in and said he'd taken the class seven times. And the first three mm-hmm. times he was arguing with himself in his mind about where he wanted to expand to. And finally, he just said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it locally first. And he expanded three times locally first. And he said, had he not done that, he might very well not be in business today because yeah. he would have put his current business at such risk. So first thing I would do is come sign up and come to one of our expansion systems orientation classes and learn those strategic 13 business principles on how to build a bigger business that Gary put together so well. Well, what questions should I have asked you that, that I didn't ask? Mm, that's a good question. I think, you know, you really hit on them all, especially the culture piece, because it's so underestimated how important that is. And then just make sure that you ask it, but I'll just reiterate, they have good business reasons for what you're doing rather than just find, you know, following a shiny object. Expansion is a great opportunity. It's a huge opportunity done right, done well, following models and systems. So I just say, if you want a big business, then follow the proven models and systems to get there. Come to ESO, become a member of the, of the uh, mega agent expansion community and learn what those who have gone before you have done right and done well and follow that model. Awesome, Kristen. Well, I appreciate your time. And the final question is, so what's the one thing that you want our listeners to take from this interview today? I want them to take from this interview that regardless of whether or not you ever expand beyond your current location, that your current business can be better. And by just coming to the class and implementing the ideas, most of us, the unintended positive consequences that all of us who have expanded have said is that our hubs are much better than they were before we ever expanded. And our leadership is like light years better than what it was before we expanded. So those are some, I want people to understand that coming to ESO, you can be a brand new agent. You can be an agent who never intends to expand. You can be a member of a team, all those, you're going to walk away with a better vision for where you're headed with more clarity than ever before and with the tools to get there. Agreed. And if somebody wants to sign up for expansion, how do they do that or how do they get in touch with you guys? Sure. Expansion at kw.com. And you can go to our homepage. Um, You can go to mykw.kw.com, click on the home button, go to Mega Agent Expansion, and you can see all the, the dates and times for ESO that are coming up and sign up right there on the spot. Kristen, awesome. Thank you for your time. David, it's been my pleasure. I can't thank you enough for having me. It's been our honor. So on behalf of Gary and Diana, myself, thank you so much for having us. It was our pleasure. If you love podcasts, I'm certain you're going to love audiobooks. And audible.com is the world's largest platform of audiobooks. If you're interested in checking out the book we talked about today for free in audio, just go to davidsfreebook.com. Yes, again, davidsfreebook.com. Dot com will get you a free 30-day trial on Audible. And don't forget to check out our sponsors, Direct Mortgage Loans, at 
directmortgageloans.com or feel free to give them a call 888-604-2525. And don't forget to mention Path to Mastery. You are listening to One More Sale with your host, David I. Hill, author of The Sales Playbook. Get your copy at www.thesalesplaybook.net.